Hi everyone, my name is Julia Lee, and I'm a doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine based in Sunnyvale, California. My practice is called the Precise Needle, and I offer acupuncture and herbal medicine to facilitate deep root level healing. Today I'm partnering with the Santa Clara County Library District to talk about mental health. In traditional Chinese medicine, the body, mind, and spirit are completely inseparable. So when we talk about mental health, we also have to talk about the physical health of the body because the physical health serves as a foundation for true mental clarity, peace, and tranquility. So a few factors that influence our physical health include eating, sleeping, digestion, and exercise. For eating, it's important that we eat regularly. That means for most of us three meals a day at about the same time every day because that routine and regularity really helps our bodies stay calm and grounded. One of the key words in eating is moderation, both in the quantity of food taken in as well as in the quality, which is not too extreme in certain flavors such as spiciness, sugariness, saltiness, all of which can imbalance the body. It's also recommended to lean towards being more plant-based in one's diet. Cold and raw foods should also be limited because these can be hard on the digestive system and can put out the digestive fire in the long run. Sleep is also another important factor for us to consider. So often when we have looming issues in our minds, just very pressing deadlines or stressful circumstances, if only we can put things down and have a good night's sleep, we often wake up the next day with more clarity and just uh, better energy for tackling the things before us. So if we can only get a full night's sleep, that would just benefit us on many different levels. Due to the way the energy flows in the body through the organs and the meridians, it's recommended, if possible, to sleep before 11 p.m. because during the hours of 11 to 3 a.m., the body is going through repair and detoxification. And if we allow the body to go into deep rest, it can facilitate those processes better. Next is digestion, which I think is another important factor to talk about, which relates to both the physical and mental well-being. Often people who have digestive issues also have mental health concerns as well. One simple way for you to assess your own digestion is to look at your bowel movement. So this was a gift from a patient of mine um, who people at the clinic have learned that they can simply look and assess their own digestive health by themselves. So if you're having issues with constipation, diarrhea, alternating between the two, or just having difficulties with your bowels, that's a sign that your digestion is off and you might need to look at finding ways to balance that. So ideally, a bowel movement at least once a day that's fully formed, easy to pass, not hard, and um, you know, no undigested food in the stool, those are all important things to consider. Our digestion is like an engine, and it needs to uh, be letting go of waste at a, regular, at a regularity, which very much is important for our physical health. And the last factor I'll mention for everybody is exercising. So as humans, you know, we all need to move around and make sure our circulation is constantly being moved. So, you know, in exercise, another um, important factor is moderation as well. Because if we over-exercise, that can also create injuries, it can deplete your body's energy. But make sure to move, to stretch every day, and that really can benefit your, your body in the long run. For those with a female body, I have another factor I wanted to point out, which is the regularity and health of your menstrual cycle. And that's so important for anybody who has a menses that you are experiencing it on a regular interval and that it's not causing any pain or cramping or premenstrual syndrome issues such as mood swings, distension, tenderness in various parts of the body and so on. And if you're experiencing any difficulties with your menstrual cycle, that can very much affect your mental health as well. So that's another factor I would like you to look at in your life if you are experiencing any concerns. And finally, just a word on technology. 
So, you know, most of us, we spend much time on our computers and on our smartphones, and that can lead into, you know, staying up late at night, not going to sleep as we should, or just bad posture, creating um, poor circulation in the neck, shoulders, and head region, which is not good because we need good circulation flowing up, you know, the blood flow going up to our brains, um, nourishing our minds. So be aware as you're using technology about your posture and as well as how you're using technology. So social media is a way to connect with people, but it doesn't replace the real-time connections that we really need to have with people that we love and trust in our lives. And I hope all of us, you know, we have trusted advisors, friends, family members, people to go to when we need help. It's really important to build that community and network in our lives. So not only connections with other humans, but we need connection with nature in order to stay grounded and to stay healthy. So what that could mean, that might look very different for each and every one of us, but it could be gardening, it could be spending time outdoors in the sun, getting your vitamin D, Um, it could be going to the beach, going hiking, or spending time in the woods. But all of that, you know, something should be done on a regular basis where you feel connected to nature. Because as humans, in Chinese medicine, we say that we're between heaven and earth. And to, in order to stay healthy, we need to continue to um, nourish that perspective and stay in touch with that perspective that we're part of this greater cosmos. So with that, I wish you much health and healing. And thank you so much for listening today. <music>